half in the bag. Roll out the dogs out. Hey, Mike, did you hear about the fat, disgusting, hairy Hollywood slob that's been using his position to take advantage of women? No. Which guy are you talking about? All of them! Wow, Jay. There must be something in the water out there in Hollywood. Thank goodness we live in Milwaukee, where the only thing we have to worry about is cryptosporidium. It's a deep cut. Humanity cannot survive. Replicants are the future of the species. In Blade Runner 2049, a dark force threatens Ponyville, and the main six, Twilight Sparkle, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and Rarity, embark on an unforgettable journey beyond Exquisiteria, where they meet new friends and exciting challenges on a quest to use the magic of friendship to save their home. Mike, what did you think of Blade Runner 2049? Well, Jay, um, I thought this movie was stark, beautiful, epic, visually stunning, amazing, uh, intricate, and boring. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the new one, not the original movie. No, uh, uh, we're, I'm talking about the new one. Um, I want to call it Blade Running Time 2049 Minutes. Uh, that's my joke of the day. Copyright me. That's my joke of the day. Okay. Um, Blade Running Time, 2049 minutes. Jay, I rewatched the first Blade Runner yesterday. Um, and I had seen it a long time ago, but I don't really remember much. I remember a guy putting down a little, little origami. origami. Um, and then I remember there was a guy with big glasses in, a, in, a, in a, some sort of yellow room. And I don't remember <laughs> anything about it. I was like, that movie's really boring, right? And then you uh, you were telling me that it's boring. It's very, very slow. I, I If anyone hasn't seen it, Colin and I did a review on it a few months ago. Yeah, and I have not even watched that review. Oh my God. Uh, and I was not here when you taped it. I was at home sleeping. While trying to watch Blade Runner While and falling to asleep. Blade Runner. So I rewatched it under the pretense that it was gonna be long and boring, over three hours long. And I watched the final cut, which was released in 2007, had no voiceover from Harrison Ford, no happy ending. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I can see the problem with it. Uh, and I'll, I'll be very specific and very quick here. Okay. The problem with it is that it's a beautifully done uh, film noir sci-fi movie. Uh, it's No Dark City. The best mm. sci-fi film noir film. Oh, um, which I haven't I, seen that in fucking forever. Uh, it, it's and it's so intricate. The the visual effects are beautiful. The sets, the the, the complexity of every shot, the way it's photographed, uh, everything. But the reason why it's boring is because nothing happens in the movie, <laughs> and you you know what's going to happen. The, there is no mystery at all uh, in the yes. first Blade Runner. And also as, and this is something I was thinking about recently, I didn't mention this in our review. Um, I had mentioned that my, the biggest problem with that movie is the story, I guess was what you're saying. Cause yeah, it's gorgeous. Uh, I don't like Harrison Ford's character. I don't think the romance works in it with him and Sean Young. Uh, I think it would have been a better movie if it focused on Rucker Howard's character. He's the interesting one with the narc. Uh, but what I was thinking about recently is, yeah, it's a it's a, a noir story. It's a sci-fi detective noir, but he doesn't do a whole lot of detective work in it. Right. Aside from the the one scene, the infamous enhanced scene that goes on for 25 minutes that you, you got to take a nap during. Enhance. Stop. Yeah, he finds the, the, the lady who fucks a snake and uh, he murders her. Yes. And then Rutger Hauer is like, me and my posse of, of uh, replicants want to talk to the big guy, Mr. Uh, Tyrell. What? And uh, we want to ask him if he can extend our lifespan. And then when they find him, he just says no. Hey, fuck your eyes. Yeah. And then it's like, then after that, they just kind of give up. So, so really, and then there's no like, if, if they never 
uh, if they it, it wove in a little more mystery with what Rutger Howard is trying to do, but it's it's all, it's all laid out. Yes, it's a it's a it's a noir mystery movie that's where everything is laid out on the table. Yeah. So really, but all it's you, beautiful. All you gotta do is sit back and you take in the images, take in the yeah. images, and just sort of enjoy the the feel of the movie. Humanity cannot survive. Replicants are the future of the species. Which is why I was uh, curious to see the new one because it's like I like the world of Blade Runner. I just didn't like that specific story. And I don't know, I haven't seen other reviews of this. I have no idea what the consensus is, but I'm going to say it's one of the best sequels ever made because it takes the things that work in the original and expands on them in a way that makes them work better. Like talking about the fact that there's no real detective work in the first movie. Uh, Ryan Gosling is a goddamn detective in this film. He's investigating the situation and there are things that you discover as the story moves along. And his character, before we get into spoilers, his character has a wonderful arc unlike Harrison Ford in the first movie. Yeah, yeah there, uh, there's the, more, much more going on in this new one. Yes, and uh, you had mentioned thinking it was boring. I don't know, I, I think it could be trimmed down a little bit, but I wasn't, maybe by like 15, 20 minutes or something, because yeah, it's almost three hours. But for the most part, I was with it, pretty much the whole way through. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought it was, it could have used some trimming, but then again, that's, that's the thing. That's, that's the, the world of Blade Runner. That's the Blade Runner is taking thing. in the, uh, the atmosphere. Like I, I wish, I, I don't know. This is going to be a, a discussion that's all over the place. But speaking of like pacing, uh, I was thinking of the, the when Ryan Gosling goes to see Harrison Ford for the first time, and he's wandering around, and he's wandering around. It's like okay, this, I, I get the atmosphere now. Let's move it along. Yeah. Uh, and I was also thinking how much more effective that sequence would have been if we didn't know Harrison Ford was in the movie. But of course, he's all he's in the trailers. He's all over promotion for it, wearing his his T-shirt and all the promotional stills for the film. He looks like a grandpa. That's his wardrobe. Is the T-shirt? His T-shirt with like stains on it. Yeah, yeah. but like, I, I, it would have been such a satisfying moment if you know we didn't know necessarily who he was going to see, or we didn't know Harrison Ford was in the movie. So we're like, is he going to show up? Oh, he did! Holy shit! That would have been great. You're waiting two hours to see Harrison Ford. You're waiting an hour for the first any kind of action sequence. <laughs> uh, so this movie's gonna bore the hell out of younger people. Well, I'm curious how this movie's gonna do because it's it's too early at the time of this recording to know what the box office is gonna be like, but right. the original movie did not do well at the box office. Yeah. It grew a following over time, uh, and that's a very slow, you know, story with lots of themes about humanity. Mm -hmm. And now we're 30 years removed from that, and the movies that are big box office hits now are so much dumber than what were box office hits then. Yes. If the original didn't do well, I, I don't know about this one doing well, but we'll see. Um, the part of me during this film, like I'm sitting there and I'm just like, ah, you know, I, am, I enjoyed the slow pace of it. Um, and my brain said to itself, I'm so glad I'm watching this and I'm not watching Pacific Rim 2. <laughs> I will not be watching that movie. Eh, the first one was fine. Well, this is a movie, this Blade Runner. This feels like, I mean, this is, uh, Denis Villeneuve continues to be one of the best filmmakers working today. Oh, is today. that how you say his first name? I think so. I'm sure someone, there'll be one random person uh, in the comments that corrects me, only one, because that's how comment sections work. Well, someone sure. makes a comment and then everybody sees that someone already made that comment, so then the other people don't make that comment. Okay, oh, oh, I see. You're saying the opposite of what reality is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sure you could verify this by watching an interview with him. Sure. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, who cares what the fuck his name is pronounced? Uh, uh, he's a great filmmaker. Uh, I've loved the other two films. Or he's probably made more than two, but I've seen He's made several. An Enemy and uh, The Arrival. Yeah. Um, so I, Sicario as I, well. I didn't see that. Well, this is uh, one of my concerns going into this movie is that the, the story of the first Blade Runner is pretty straightforward. There's these four replicants. You got to track them down. And then it got bogged down in re-edits and Ridley Scott gobbledygook of the ambiguity of, is Deckard a replicant? And what is the unicorn? What the unicorn means? And all this bullshit. Uh, and I was worried that uh, Denis Villeneuve could go two ways. He could go uh, abstract enemy area, or he could do straightforward, well-told sci-fi story arrival area. Uh, type of filmmaking. And I was worried that it might double down on the ambiguous 
unicorn type bullshit from the first movie, and he didn't do that. In fact, if anything, I would say it maybe goes just a, a hint too much in the other direction. Mainly I'm talking, thinking of, uh, there's a couple parts throughout the movie when Ryan Gosling, like he's thinking about something and we hear voiceover clips from earlier in the film, so you remember it. That happens a couple times where it's like, yeah, you probably didn't need that. That feels like trying to spell things out a little bit too much for the audience. Yeah. No, but that's, I, that's, that's a minor complaint about the movie. Yeah, other than not being wholly original, like the first Blade Runner movie was its own thing. It's yes. like, here's our, like it invented the, the massive sci-fi city scape. Yeah. Uh, this didn't really do anything new. It, it took the old and expanded upon it. Yes. Um, I, I, I would lean more towards soft reboot Kind of, kind yeah. Of you don't have to have seen the original to to get into this movie. Yeah, I guess it's just like uh, this even opens with the same text. Like the, the text explains what happened in 2019, 2018. That the first one takes place, and then it's like, oh, and then 30 years later, the same thing happened again. And yeah. Now, and then we have this bad guy. Um, the bad guy has a goal, though, other than just being the guy who made the robots before. Right. Um, this bad guy has a goal. He has got a little people working for him. There's mystery of uh, spoilers. Should we get into spoilers? Yeah, spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead. I always told you, you're special. <laughs> uh, there's a mystery uh, of uh, a baby. Born from a replicant. Born from a, a replicant. Has it ever been established if Harrison Ford is or is not a replicant? Well, that's that's the other thing, is the ambiguity in the first movie. Is he a replicant or is he not? Ridley Scott says he is, and everybody else involved with the movie says, Ridley Scott, you're an idiot. No. Uh, so that's always been the ambiguity. And I like that in this movie, there's like one line that mentions that he might be, he might not be, but it doesn't matter because that's not important to this story. So they kind of brush across it, where it's like, if you think he's a replicant, this movie will work. If you don't, it still works. Yeah. They, but they don't say one way or the other, which I think is the best way to handle it. Well, after watching the final cut, my assumption was that he was a replicant. But well, that's uh, Ridley Scott's intention. Yeah, because yeah, he had a dream about a unicorn, and then the mysterious man that works with him left the unicorn origami. Right. So, so he has some sort of involvement in planting memories. And to to me, him that. being a replicant ruins the whole movie, though. The whole time I kept thinking, can two replicants make a baby? or can a, a human and a replicant make a baby? If the idea is that replicants can reproduce amongst themselves and this whole underground resistance thing of replicants yeah. standing up to fight against their slavitude, <laughs> is that a word? Um, makes more sense because then they can, they can band together, they could form a resistance, they could multiply and have children themselves, they can yeah. evolve, right. which I think was the, the the implication was that um, Rachel was sort of an evolved replicant who could bear children. Yeah. Um, so, you know, all those, uh, you, you got all those themes of uh, humanity, mortality, life, death, and Ryan Gosling's face. Well, I know we obviously, we made a joke video making fun of his lack of expression, but in the context of the movie, it works. And then they, there's no ambiguity here right off the bat. He is a replicant. Uh, there's some mystery later on that maybe he isn't, but it, it works for the first half of this movie, as, as far as the way he performs it. Yeah. It doesn't work in the first movie when Harrison Ford is not supposed to be a replicant, uh, or you're supposed to think he's not a replicant, and he still acts like a dull, boring asshole. Yeah, replicants are dull, boring assholes. So That's Ryan the problem Gosling. with the first Blade Runner, is everybody kind of is, so it's like, eh, you're losing that. But th this one really, uh, I, I feel like, for, the, for me, this movie feels like what other people got out of the original that I didn't. It's like in this movie, it's like, oh, I see it now. Like, I think this works so much better as far as, yeah, relaying that kind of theme of humanity and what it means to be a human. Uh, yes. and, and it does expand more on the idea of, of replicants wanting to be treated like, like humans and normal people. Uh, in a way that I thought, like the ending, it's, it's, I thought it was incredibly satisfying. Oh yeah, yeah. And no. I thought Harrison Ford gave a much better performance than he's given in decades. Yes. I think he's better than he is in the first movie because I feel that humanity in him in this one and I didn't in the original. What do you want? I want to ask you some questions. The, the, ending, the ending worked. The ending worked very well. Um, and then, you know, you have, the love element too. I mean, Ryan Gosling is is in love with a hologram. 
and uh, they have a whole little story about that. Um, and then, of course, Harrison Ford and Rachel, and you, so you, like you said, you, the the love romance part in the first one didn't. Quite, I did not work for me at all. Fell flat yeah. for you. So this expands on that. Yeah. Expands on the villains and their plot. Expands on what it means to be a replicant and what the future of replicants are. The first one's just like, ah, eh, we got a couple of strays. Get them. Yeah. And uh, you know, you feel more for uh, Rutger Hauer's character. Because, yes. you know, he's like this is the Christ figure with the nail through the hand and all this. And uh, and there's something going on there, but it's never quite fully developed. Um, so it, it expands on the themes and it also expands on... Uh, the running time? It expands on the running time. Uh, but it also uh, expands on the characters of the first movie. I mean, it's mainly just Harrison Ford, but you do get to see him at an older... It's not like uh, Han Solo where he's just doing the same thing. 30 yes. years later, yes. <laughs> he's in a different place. It, it reminded me of, this is becoming a thing now when you revive a dead old franchise or an old movie uh, where it becomes like a father-son situation. Mm. Cause I was like, Tron Legacy did that. Uh, Force Awakens did that. Now this kind of does that. Turns out, I guess we're in spoilers, that turns out not to be his son, but still mm. it has that same kind of theme running through it. So what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? We need a new Blade Runner. It's Ryan Gosling. We got to put Harrison Ford in the film. Yeah. But it didn't feel like a, a compromised studio movie. I mean, this no. felt this felt like a film made by a real filmmaker uh, that clearly loves the original Blade Runner. Yes, but it's it's one of those scenarios where you you take a movie and, and like you said, I didn't see the Total Recall reboot. Oh God. Um, I did see the RoboCop one, um, but where you take a movie and you remake it, but you do it better. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that, that go, no, the original Blade Runner is much better, this is trash. People and, people love that original Blade Runner. Vice versa, but if you really look at the original Blade Runner, which I did like, I, I, I didn't love it, but I can see the flaws where it's like lacking and in lots, lots of the mechanics that make a movie work. Yeah. Visually, great but it's lacking in a lot of the mechanics. And this just upped the visuals even more because now they could do anything. And right. Of course, it's, it's beautiful and fascinating and interesting, um, but they, they enhanced all the parts that you're supposed to get emotion from. Yeah. And, and, and they, 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 didn't, they didn't just do almost a beat for beat remake of the original. Yes. That's what I loved right off the bat. We start out because like the, the opening in the first movie, it's boom, there's that city. There's the, the, you know, the, the fire uh, shooting up. And this one, it's like, hey, here's like a desert wasteland where a guy is planting stuff. Mm. They know you're here. Overall, it's, it's a movie you really need to be, I'm talking about the new one. It's a movie you really need to be in the mood to watch because it's, uh, you love post-apocalyptic, dour, depressing stuff. Uh, I do, and only a certain time. Yeah. I wouldn't call this dour and depressing, though, and that's kind of one of the things I liked about it. Well, the ending yeah. picked it up. The whole movie, though, like that that universe, that world, is just gross and depressing. And oh, awful. it's wonderful. Well, that's what makes that's what makes the ending so satisfying, though. Yeah, there's a little spark of hope at the yeah. end. Yeah, well, that's, that's I, I loved Ryan Gosling's arc in this movie, mm. where he starts out, he's just, he's just a replicant as far as he knows, um, people kind of, even people in the police department are like, you know, giving him shit for being a replicant. Like skin they're just complete job. skin job. They're just completely looking down on him. And then he discovers that he's special because he thinks he's a child born from a replicant. And then he discovers he's not special, but he still decides to, you know, help other people. And yeah, that was a nice little twist. And, and it was a nice homecoming for Deckard, who I just assumed would just get his head blown off. <laughs> But I think towards the end, like, I don't know, the, the, the new, we'll call her Rachel 3.0, <laughs> um, was when Ryan Gosling is like drowning her. And I'm just like, oh, this is just miserable. <laughs> um, oh, I liked it. I was fine with all that you stuff. Know what, then like, just as a, uh, a location for a fight scene or an yeah. action scene, it's not, you know, because people think of Blade Runner, it's this big, expansive city and... It's like, it, like you can't even see anything. There's just waves crashing and you don't see anything, right. anything outside of that. Yeah, it didn't take such place. A, so. Such a strong like confidence in the visuals of like what to show, what not to show. And it has what well, maybe one of my favorite scenes of the year, which is Replicant Three-Way. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> such, a, such an interesting, weird, and like kind of simple effect. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, I mean, it's not as probably wasn't simple to render, but just like the idea of the two characters kind of being laid over each other like that. Yeah, like really like beautiful and weird and different. He's on your tail. I'm coming with you. What's the plan? We don't run. This movie should get like an Oscar award for production design because there's that it's that that world, that technology, and that, that was part of it, was the three-way scene, that feels so like perfectly integrated to where it feels like it's the real future. Yeah. Um, like his little like, doodling, doodling, like it played a song every time he shut it on and off, you yeah. see the graphic and he's like, eh, and there's like a 3D thing over there. And it, you're like, that's probably what things will look like. And it just feels like so, it would be like if someone in the, in the 1970s was watching a movie where everyone had a little square thing that went doo -doo 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 -doo, <laughs> like when, when it rang yeah it would be like yeah, that's weird that's that, you know that makes sense in a way and so it felt so like streamlined and integrated all the the tech and well and it was nice to see a movie where the future is not just holographic screens touch screens everywhere like ugh. Uh, yeah. ryan gosling was filling out paperwork on an actual piece of paper yes. at one point i wanted to bring that up how, <laughs> how they brought in because like blade runner obviously was in the 80s and and had certain limitations with technology. Yeah. And so they integrated that into this to where it seemed like some of that Blade Runner tech from 20, 30 years ago is kind of still in use, but yeah. like he's looking at what is kind of like a microfiche machine. Yeah. When he's... It's like, a, I don't know if it was meant to be a digital microfiche, but yeah, same mm -hmm. idea. If something's making a physical clicking sound, you know it's like older technology. It's yeah. not quiet, but yeah, you're right. It's not look... You, you spoke of the, the choosing what to show and what not to show. And that, that was like really apparent in this because it's not, it's not look, at, look at this visuals. I keep thinking of Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Uh, Anakin Skywalker has to chase the bad guy. <laughs> and so of course they're gonna jump out the window and jump on speeders and go through all these, and jump from one speeder to the other and go through this building and that yeah. building. Look at this world we have, isn't it amazing? Yeah. This like, the ending was a car sinking in the water <laughs> and, or getting punched in some kind of dusty room. Yeah, and, the, and, and then the, the aged dirty look of a lot of the the tech, the cars, the... His car specifically, there's yeah. like wrappers and shit yeah. laying around, like food wrappers. Yeah. The police station is not like super technologically advanced with these big rooms. It's just like dirty and gross. And yeah. that, that lived in world look, like the production design of, of this movie is just incredible. And it's sort of weird, like I want to praise it because I think this is a great movie, but at the same time, as we're talking about the lived in world, that all exists because of the original movie. Right. So it's like, eh. Yeah. Yeah, if you were to, to take the old movie, blow it up, but not in a dumb way, they did it. You do not know what pain is yet. You will learn. Uh, so it's a movie like, yeah, yeah, you watch, uh, it's like the old one. It's a, it's a, it's a comfy nightmare blanket. It's what I... <laughs> you wrap yourself in. And, uh, and this, this I could see watching over three, four days, just kind of chilling. It's one of the, it's one of those movies you have to plan your day around. Yes. Like Magnolia. No one ever says, I'm just gonna sit down and relax for 90 minutes and watch Magnolia. And then everybody's just like screaming at each other for three hours. Fuck you! What do you do, Jordan? What do you do, I wish Gary Marshall was still alive to make pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Marshall's Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> yes. Oh, Everyone's in the, in the restaurant. <laughs> and then the Blade Runner comes in and he says, can I get a round of drinks for everybody? It's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> what are you talking about? like to bring up Star Trek. Um, this movie stole the concept of the mobile emitter uh, because the doctor character on Star Trek Voyager. Is that Picard? Robert, Robert Picardo? Picardo? Yeah, he's, he's confined to the sickbay at first because there's hollow projectors in the sickbay. It's mm. an emergency medical hologram. 
and he's there just for emergency purposes, but he ends up becoming the doctor. And then in the later seasons, they find a futuristic technology that's called his hollow emitter that he wears on his sleeve that okay. allows him to, trans, to, to go on adventures outside of the sick bay. Okay, that's, that is exactly the same thing that's in this. Yes, and, uh, and, and then we discover later on that the, the, the Federation uses holograms as slave labor mm. to dig in mines. And so there's all these Robert Picardos digging in, in, in <laughs> probably dilithium mines, okay. doing, doing the awful work. And so they, they bring up the idea of, of, of equal rights for holograms eventually in, in Star Trek. So. Yeah. Our definition of what constitutes a person has continued to evolve. Now we're asking that you expand that definition once more to include our doctor. What I'm trying to say is Blade Runner 2049 ripped off Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> and there's nothing more embarrassing than that. <laughs> Replicants are the future, but I can only make so many. I had the luck and he has the key. So Jay, would you recommend Blade Runner Blade Running Time 2049? Uh, I absolutely would. As someone that isn't too keen on the original movie, I thought this did everything that was in the original movie just a little bit better. I thought it was a better story. Uh, I don't want to say better visuals. I mean, it, t it obviously is because it's a movie made now, but it takes the ideas of the original, the visuals of the original, expands on them in a way where it doesn't feel like you're just seeing the same shit again. A lot of the same, like, like there's a little couple of Easter eggs in there. The Atari logo. Oh yeah, the things. Pan Am. The Pan Am building, which Pan Am <laughs> well, doesn't that's exist in, anymore. In the world of Blade Runner, that would continue probably. So yeah, no, all that stuff I thought was great, yeah. and I just thought it was a more compelling, engaging story than the first movie. Right. Because that was the biggest weakness of the original film is yeah. the actual story. So you would recommend it to someone who was on the fence or didn't like the original Blade Runner. Like, Outside of the visuals. Here comes, here comes a, check out this Blade Runner. Yes. This one's better. Is that, that's, that's. I, I think, I think it's better. I, I don't know, people will probably crucify me for that because people love that original. Love the original all you want. I'm not gonna criticize you for it, but the people that do love it, they sure love to criticize people that don't love it. Hmm. So yeah, I would recommend this film to, to cinephiles uh, sci-fi fans. I, I like my sci-fi more hopeful and uh, less less post-apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. That's just not my thing. Um, but uh, I, I can appreciate this movie uh, for the uh, the work of art that it is. It's it is it is unique. I, I really like this filmmaker. Yeah. Um, but. To a lot of people, it's gonna be boring as fuck. <laughs> to a lot of people. Like, I sit there and I was like, you know, you, you're given time to absorb the world. Yeah. So while, while I'm given the time to absorb the world, I'm appreciating the work that has gone into every little detail sure. in this world. And I think a lot of people um, take the amount of, of work and visual effects that are in movies now for granted. It was a Rick and Morty joke. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of people take it for granted that there's going to be a, the, the, like, oh, this effects, eh, this effects. Eh, yeah. it sucked. I was bored, it sucked, and then they'll move on. I can imagine in, in millions of theaters all over the world, there's gonna be that guy who go, suck, <laughs> in the background, <laughs> who, who doesn't appreciate this kind of movie. So I say, eh, tread lightly, hmm. but, I would recommend it to probably the majority of our audience. So Jay, when's your gay wedding?